How's it going everyone? My name is Cubfan. Here are some tips, tricks, and tidbits you may not know about Minecraft. You can't till Podzol found in Mega Taiga biomes. And also you can't destroy Podzol by placing blocks on top of it. Banners can be placed directly on top of one another, just like signs. If you kill a zombie pigman in one hit, the other zombie pigmen will not become angry toward you. You can do this by using a Smite 5 Diamond Sword and then simply perform a critical hit on the pigman just like that and as you can see the other pigmen around here are not angry toward me and as with zombie pigmen the same thing applies to silverfish if you go ahead and kill the silverfish in one hit they won't be able to spawn their friends from the silverfish blocks but if you don't then you see yeah you got a big problem you can create a better castle wall by simply placing string on top of your cobblestone or mossy cobblestone walls. And this just makes it look much more like a castle. Alright, so there is a right and a wrong way to battle zombie pigmen. So if I hit one of these guys and make them angry, you'll see that they pursue me vigorously and they're traveling pretty fast. But after about 20 to 40 seconds, they will forgive the player. And once that happens, you can leave their tracking radius, which is about 40 blocks. And then whenever you come back into that radius, they will no longer be aggravated. So we'll give it another few seconds here. They're still looking like they're moving pretty fast, but they should start to slow down relatively soon. Yep, there we go. So you see they're moving a lot slower now. And so I'm going to draw them over here. And then we'll run by them. Come on, piggies. There we go. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, let's go. So now if we leave their their tracking radius. Just like this. We'll come over here. We'll sprint all the way down this side. So now we're over 40 blocks away. And we'll give it a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and eat some chicken. But when we go back, they should no longer be aggravated toward us. So let's go ahead and go back now. See what happened. See they're all still there. And they are not aggravated. So that is how you fight zombie pigman. If you do not have a weapon or you've accidentally hit a whole bunch of them. You can place blocks on the outside of an iron cage from the inside just like so. And this also includes blocks like anvils. If you encounter a water flowing through half slabs that terminates near a wall, you can sneak up to the wall here, and then you will automatically start jumping without pressing any buttons. Potion particle effect colors will mix together. Let me show you what I mean here. So right now I have a potion of night vision, which is blue. So there you have blue particles from the potion of night vision. And we also have potion of strength which emits red particles when we have that effect but if we combine them both red and blue together will make purple particles you can power an infinitely long track of powered rails with just one single lever so let me show you how it works first place down a lever and turn it on on any point along your track then go ahead and come to the last powered rail flick down a lever turn it on and the same where you have the first unpowered rail just like that. Then destroy the first lever and second lever you placed. And then just repeat this pattern all the way down the line. And you can already see how it sort of works. So lever here, lever here. Destroy that one, destroy that one. And then just continue the pattern for as far as you want. And eventually you'll have one single lever that can power as much powered rail track as you'd like. However, do note that if you place a block down somewhere along this track, it'll update the powered rails and they will no longer be turned on. Armor stands will activate pressure plates. You can use cakes as stairs. In addition to giant jungle trees, you can also grow giant spruce trees in the same way. Just place four spruce saplings down like that, and then boom, there you go. Giant spruce tree. The Guardian is the only mob whose ranged attack gets stronger if you give them a strength potion. So, for instance, Usually you'll have four and a half hearts of damage on hard difficulty from a guardian, but if I hit this guy with a potion of strength too, boom, 
10 hearts of damage. The base of an armor stand can be hidden by snow. Mobs that wear mob heads do not burn during the day. You can make a super simple landmine by doing the following. So go ahead and dig down three blocks, then the block in front of you, place down a dispenser with a fire charge inside of it, and go ahead and come back up to the surface, place down a block like that, and then three blocks like that. Now place your rail down, go ahead and place a minecart with TNT, and push it into that hole. Get rid of your blocks around there, fill that in, and then place a pressure plate above where your uh, dispenser is. And there you have it. You have a landmine now. You can see it's pretty much instant when you step on the landmine. And yeah, you can also use a bud switch to completely hide it. If you rename a book and quill inside of an anvil, so for instance, we'll just rename this one. And you can't write inside of the book and quill. However, if you've already started to write inside one and you rename it, so for instance, re rename this one book and Q, then you can indeed write inside of it. You can jump continuously by pressing space and escape at the exact same time. Just like that. And now if I go back to the game, I am now jumping continuously. I'm not pressing space bar as you can tell. And you'll continue to jump until you hit space bar again. Minecraft saplings don't burn. So if you want to fireproof an area, just use saplings. If you're in creative mode, you can create a partially invisible chest by doing the following. So go ahead and place down a double chest here, a block right there, and then just do slash set block, and then at the coordinates you're looking at, a chest, and there you go, you see like an invisible outline here, you can see it is a chest indeed, you can put stuff in there. And this chest is actually connected to this chest in sort of a very strange way. It's almost like a triple chest, and yeah, you can see some weird stuff going on here. But it is indeed connected, and you can, yeah, shift-click the different inventories and stuff like that. Uh, and, yeah, the chest is also solid, so kind of interesting there. No matter what, you cannot sprint for more than 30 seconds continuously within Minecraft. And this is done to simulate tiredness after sprinting. So you'll see I'll sprint normally like this, and also I'll sprint and jump like this to travel a bit faster. But regardless, after 30 seconds, we will slow down. Curiously, this also applies to creative mode, and so you can't sprint fly for more than 30 seconds as well. So here we should see ourselves slow down. Yep, right there, you saw it. We are now slowed down and just traveling at normal walking speed. And we have to double tap forward again or press control to start to sprint once more. So you can't sprint continuously for more than 30 seconds in Minecraft. Activated rails will never drop mobs in the positive Z direction, which is this way in our case. So here you can see that can help you in putting mobs into the appropriate water stream or the appropriate area whenever you're trying to unload them. You can sometimes be attacked through glass panes. If you're wearing a piece of armor with thorns on it, and you're shot by a fire charge launched out of a dispenser, then your game will crash. If you sprint off a structure like this onto a pressure plate, you get some really weird stuff happening. Apparently you can land on both the pressure plate and the slime block, or whatever other block you choose, at the same time. So let me just show you here. There we go. And yeah, that's really weird because you either land on the slime block or the pressure plate, but you're not supposed to be able to do both. You see, as you can see here, you can't really duplicate that in any way by jumping on this and it also works for stuff like lamps so there you go you saw the lamp turn on there so kind of a weird thing you can right click on the edge of an empty furnace minecart and that will cause it to move quite quickly in the opposite direction and this is really useful especially when you're taking a bunch of minecarts up a hill just click right keep clicking on the cart like this and yeah you can power it up the hill relatively easily. There you go. If you view the moon during moonrise in third person looking at yourself, you'll see the moon turn red. And just to show you that it is indeed the moon, that's the sun, that's the moon. The dragon egg does not burn in lava. Wooden doors and wooden trap doors are not flammable. 
If a witch finds its head underwater, it will quickly drink a underwater breathing potion, as you see right there. This means that witches cannot be drowned in water. If you try to light ice on fire with a flint and steel, the flint and steel will take damage despite the fact that ice can't be lit on fire. You can sprint through fire without actually catching on fire. You can't see player names through paintings. You can place mushrooms on Podzol in broad daylight. You can place carpet freestanding on top of water. And in doing so, when you walk across it, you will hear no footsteps. Treading with a villager will cause the villager to regenerate two hearts of health. And you can see that through the particles they emit whenever you complete a trade. Hmm, what does this say? Who needs the moon when you can go to the sun? What? In survival? No way. Come on now. You can't be serious. To the sun? Come on. Oh, snap, son. As long as there are no valid air blocks for a dragon egg to teleport to in a 15 by 15 by 7 area, you can mine it directly. So you can see here I am right clicking the dragon egg. It's not teleporting, so that means we can go ahead and mine it. It does take a little bit of time. But there you go. You can mine the dragon egg directly. You can put a stack of emeralds, diamond, gold, or iron into a beacon by using a hopper. But when you try and put one in manually, you can only put in one at a time. Also, if you do use the hopper method and then want to change the effect of the beacon, it does only use one ingot per switch of the effect. So, that is quite cool. Here is probably the strangest glitch that I've ever seen in the game. So here we have a boat. Uh, we got some fence gates lining a water stream that goes down at the very end, right before the wall. And a boat placed into that water stream will travel through a solid block and then continue going for quite a ways until, yeah, it eventually comes to a stop. And the crazy thing is you can actually jump across when the boat is there. It's pretty wild. And if we hit F3 plus B, let me just do that here. You can see that the boat is actually traveling through, but you can't hit it. Which begs the question, where is this game putting the boat? Um, yeah, just sort of a crazy, wild glitch in the game. Just a few more quick notes on this glitch. Uh, it does work in survival. Let me just get a good run here. There we go. Yeah, you can jump across it like that. But again, you can't hit it or interact with it. You can't get in the boat or anything. And this was discovered by somebody on Reddit, so all credit goes to that person. An easy way to prevent boats from breaking, even when traveling at full speed, is to make your boat dock out of half slabs. A compass in Minecraft typically points toward your original spawn point. As you can see here, we have all compasses facing in the general direction of south, which is where our spawn point is. But, there's some weird stuff that happens with compasses if you go to the nether. So let's just go there real quick here. And so number one, you'll see that the compass no longer works. It's completely useless. It's sort of spinning around there. And if we go back to the overworld, something even stranger happens. So if you remember before, our compass used to point to the south, which is this direction here. So you'll see this is indeed south. But instead now the compass is facing to the east. And in fact, if we follow this, we should see that the compass now points at the coordinate X8, Z8. So it should be right around here, yeah. So let's see if we can get it. Yep, about right here. So let's see. Yep. X7, Z6. And yeah, we're right around 8, 8, which is what the compass is pointing to. And I presume this has something to do with the fact that 8 blocks in the overworld is equal to 1 block in the nether. But still, it is very strange behavior indeed, although it is fixed by relogging. Whenever you stand on soul sand, the sky gets darker. You can easily build a campfire in Minecraft by doing the following. So go ahead and dig down one block here, and then two deep in a 3x2 area, just like this. Go ahead and place a bed down right here. And you want cobblestone walls here and here. 
and then place a water source block right there. Then go ahead and place some blocks right there, and then two cobblestone wall right there. Then place a water in that spot right there. Then make a little pillar here. Place down some armor stands in four different directions. There, there, straight on, and there. They should all line up like that. Go, and then go ahead and place a block down there. Get rid of the pillar. And they'll start jumping up and down. And at that point you need to place a water source right down there. So they should all be aligned just like that. Get rid of those two cobblestone walls. And then you're going to want to go ahead and break this cobblestone wall and place down lava. So there we go. Now we just need to fill in blocks here. And you'll see you can't place any blocks like this. So just come up here. And the easiest way to do this is just to use some slime blocks like so. And so we'll need some pistons here. Let's do this. Piston, piston. Here we go. Power one, power the other one, and then just get rid of all the unnecessary blocks here. And there's your campfire. And just a quick note here, the fire actually doesn't burn you, and this was discovered by Jesper. You can easily create a haunted grave in Minecraft by doing the following. So go ahead and place down a gravestone here, then dig a 2x1 hole in front of it, and place a bed down in it, and gravel right on top, just like that. Come to the side here, dig down two blocks, and three blocks long. Pistons like that. Dirt and grass right there. Dig down two more blocks here. And three more blocks right there. And on this dirt block, we're going to place down a redstone torch. Block on top of it with dust on it. And then a pressure plate right down here. So now all you need to do to use this is just simply, yeah, wait till night. So we'll switch it to night. Step on the pressure plate. Hop in the bed, and then at any time you can leave the bed, and then just destroy whatever is left out here. And you may have to jump to get some of the blocks, but that's okay. There we go. Just fill everything in like that, and there you go. If we go into F5 mode, you'll see it's your own haunted grave. And you can also shift and totally disappear, and then pop out whenever you want. Also, I should note that even in survival, you don't suffocate, even when you're completely hidden. And, of course, you can always combine the two ideas. So, we have a gravestone here. Dig down. We'll put a bed down here. Armor stand directly on there. Zombie head and a chest plate there. And we'll go ahead and fill it in with gravel here. We'll need a piston right there. Gravel there. Push it into the zombie. And there you go. You got an evil entity popping out of the grave. That is pretty darn cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed all these tips, tricks, and tidbits, and hopefully you learned something new about Minecraft. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Cubfan. Goodbye.